So welcome everybody. This is Energy Play Shop number 27. And today is November the 24th, 2022. The topic for today is Sacred Chakra and Power. So as I mentioned um, just a, a bit ago is, is that the um, last, last week we talked about something about the the sacral chakra so sacral chakra is where our sexual organs are and it's also where we as a creative being can actually create out of emotions and love um, with all that we can actually create a new another human being just through um, what we have physically so that's the, the so that's why I want to talk more about how we can reclaim our power. Um, that's part of the, the sacral chakra conversation as well, and also because um, we just started a very new period of time on Earth where it's. Um, mm, it's it's really the time for humanity as a whole to come together and um, create what it is that we want to experience. To so in short, to reclaim all of humanity, to reclaim the power that we we had given away um, in the last I don't know how many thousand years that we've done that. So now that we are here, um, how do we? reclaim our own power as well and also talking about how to um i think jason nestis mentioned that it's it's also high time to renegotiate our contracts because everything that we do um that our our um relationship with other people is contracts so contracts does not mean that it has to be very formal on the piece of paper and and we just, you know, sign our blood on it. It can't, so contract is really agreement. And when he talked about agreement, I was like, hmm, I would like to figure out for myself how how do I think um, I would approach uh, renegotiating the contracts that I have um, with, you know, why the purpose I'm here on Earth, and also my contracts with my family members, other loved ones. So that's that's why you know that's that's why I start started talking about um, power and the sacral chakra, and so that is kind of the reason behind this play shop. So as before, I the 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 agenda is that um, there'll be. A, a presence meditation, then I'll start by just doing a very quick review of what we talked about, what the, 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 the um, at a high level, what the sacral chakra is, where it is, and those things, and then just go into talking about um, sacral uh, chakra and power, what's the connection there, and also how do we reclaim our power, because before we can or before I can renegotiate any contracts that I have with um, anyone in my life, I have to claim my own power back first because um, a lot of the contracts or agreements that we have, we may very unconsciously when we are not too aware of our own power. And it it seems really logical for me that I'm not going to re renegotiate or even try to renegotiate any of those agreements before I reclaim my own power. So that's why this is um, this this play shop is all about reclaiming our own power. So any questions before or any any comments before I go to do the presence meditation? from anybody? No? Okay, great. Let's yeah, I have oh, one. Sure. Go ahead. Not, not really a question, more just, <laughs> just like a, a, a comment. Um, I think our power was, we didn't give our power away. 
I think our power was sort of, uh, um, we were misled many times, or we were, um, there was there was massive corruption and massive ways that our power might have been taken away. I don't think we just gave it away. I, I think we, you know, I, I think it, ancestrally too, over over generations. Anyway, I just, Okay, great. <laughs> Very Wanted to put that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sort of stolen from us. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I will address all of that um, a little later on. It's um, it's all in the mix. So thank you for for your comments. Anything else before we start? No. Okay. Great. So let's do the, the presence meditation. So let's take a deep breath in. So move around, make yourself comfortable, and then simply take a deep breath in. And let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And let it all go. Take a third deep breath in. And let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. With every breath that you breathe in, just imagine that you are bringing in infinite possibilities. And as you breathe out, simply let go of anything that does not support you in this moment. Things like stress or tension. You can all let it go as you breathe out. And simply do that a few more times so that you can just feel your body being very relaxed. And when you start to feel that your body is relaxed, then mix intention to set is as you breathe in, call back in all of your energy as well. During the day, we send our energy out into the world because we put our attention out as we meet with other people, as we run errands as we do our work, all of those things. We send our energy out. Now, let's call all of the energy back. Now, every time you breathe in, just imagine all of your energy coming back within your body. Really allow yourself to feel your energy coming back to you. Really feel energy coming back into your body each time you breathe in. Feel energy coming down through the top of your head, coming down through all around your body, coming back into your body. Call back all of your attention and then call back all parts of yourself. Sometimes part of ourselves decides to go and do something else, somewhere else. 
maybe because we were doing something that all of us are not interested in, especially if we're doing something that's very repetitive. For example, cleaning the house. Organizing your files, those really repetitive things that needed to be done, but does not need all of our own consciousness to be here. Then parts of ourselves would simply go and explore somewhere else. So now is the time to call back all parts of ourselves for the rest of this play shop so that we can be present to play a hundred percent. And as you call back all parts of yourself, allow yourself to feel what it feels like to have all parts of you present. Feel the difference between now when you have called back all parts of yourself. Call back all of your attention and energy. You may feel more solid within your body, more present. However you feel, it's absolutely perfect. And when you have done that, then open your eyes and come all the way back into the room. Welcome back, everybody. As I mentioned, first thing I want to do is actually do a very quick review of what we talked about last week. Not to repeat everything, but just the highlights. So let me share the highlights with all of you. <clears throat> Okay, so the highlights, a very quick review. So sacral chakra, where is it? It's two inches below our belly button, two inches below the navel, and it's in the center of our lower belly and our back. And it governs our sexual organs, our lower abdomen and hips area. It is connected to creativity, to the feelings of intimacy and trust. The sacral chakra really helps us express ourselves as a creator being and to build a bond with other people. And the core elements of this chakra is water because this chakra, the second chakra is about emotions. So we do store a lot of emotions here. And also we feel pleasure as well here. As the second chakra, it also denotes how we experience and integrate polarity, how we play in duality. Everything that disagrees with us is actually giving us another perspective of who we are within oneness. And ultimately, the what the second chakra is here is to help us to integrate different perspectives so that we can come up with a new solution as a creative being to move forward as a whole in oneness. So these are really the, the highlights of what the sacral chakra is about. And so next is really to talk about sacral chakra and power. So before I talk about um, what the sacral chakra and power is, uh, let me just give a definition of what power is. Um, 
I so I came across one definition of power which I like, and it's from Emilia Benz in one of her um, one of one of the class that I took from her, and it's called the Rules of Engagement. So I think I mentioned this class with you all a couple of years ago. At, um, yeah, so so I just want to read out to you what her definition of power is. So power is the ability, or actually power is the energy behind in our capacity to mold our experience at a soul level as well as at a physical level in the body and in our environment. So that is what power is. There are some people that are powerful, that we think of as powerful. Um, I, let me give you some example. Um, for example, Martin Luther King Jr. with his speech on civil um, liberties is like, I have a dream. So that that speech still today is considered one of the, the, the most powerful speech that was ever given. And um, and Martin Luther King definitely has power, even though he was assassinated. However, his legacy lived on to shape the the course of America and the course of the world. So that is power. Power, um, as in a definition that I, I read to you a little before is that he has the he has the power because he and him just by him being who he was um, using words to inspire other people to fight um, injustice in a way that that really changes people around him and so much more. So that is power. And to give another example is Malala. Um, I think her, her last name is Yusuf Saeed. So I may have butchered the pronunciation of that name, but um, I think you all know who I'm, whom I'm talking about. So she was a young lady who at the age of 15 was actually um, shot by Taliban gunmen. So on, on his left um, brain, and she lived, and she was shot because the the gunmen want to to silence her. However, she lived. Even gun, even a gunshot cannot um, deter her or or scare her away from doing what it it was that's in her heart to do. And she definitely made an impact on other people who wants to um, further the education of every child, of every children. So that is power, the power that is so strong that can withstand the, the, the whole might of the Taliban, the whole might of a bullet. So even that cannot kill in that power. So that is what power is about. So why are we powerful then? So how come you, me, or somebody like Martin Luther King or Manala, how come we are powerful? Um, there's been so many other versions of human beings before what it is that we know. For example, we have the Neanderthal man. I think we also have the Mancino man. So there's been a, a few iterations of human beings that archaeologically we, um, we have, we've discovered until we get to this, this uh, the, the bodies that we have right now the reason why that even though there have been so many other 
I would say, much more powerful beings that has walked this earth. However, human beings are still the the majority of the 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 beings that are shaping the earth and shaping reality here. How come? It's because that is the will of Mother Earth. Mother Earth itself is a an entity, has a preference. And of all the different species of beings that has come and gone on Earth, Mother Earth chose us, chose this version of human beings to be the major shaper of this environment. So that is why these bodies that we think of as being frail and, and um, not too powerful, these are actually the bodies that the hum that the, the the entity that we called Earth selected. There has been so many other um, beings before, but none of them was able to survive. The Earth, one way or another, managed to kill them off or drove them away or underground somewhere else. And only human beings were allowed to be here, to play um, as the major beings or major um, collective to shape the, the, the future of Earth. So that's why we are powerful. Not because, um, yes, we are powerful soul. We have we are eternal soul as well. However, our eternal soul paired with this body, this body that earth has selected to be able to survive and that, that earth will support and nurture in order to shape everything that goes on, that happens on earth. So the combination of our eternal soul and these bodies that the eternal soul um, inhabit. That's why, that, that is really what makes us powerful if you, if you really think about it. So that's why we are powerful. And um, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, so that's part of our power as well. I mentioned that we are eternal souls. And when we come here, when we come to earth to play, when we come here and paired and partner up with a body, the as eternal soul, we actually, we are eternal, we are omnipotent, we are omnipresent, all of that. We are God-like beings as a soul. However, when we come to earth, when we took on a body, when we pair um, with this body to come play in this environment that earth has provided for us, we actually came, um, we have to hook on certain limitations because as eternal beings, as all powerful beings, if we took on the body and we still kept all of our omnipotent powers, then it's a very different play on Earth. Um, and that's really not Earth. Um, that's not really what Earth is for. Earth is really for experimenting with something else. It's really working with matter, working with this body. And so eternal soul, omnipotent soul that we are, we took on limitations. And part of that limitations come as a, like the story comes as that there are bad people who wants to uh, dumb us down in order to control us, in order to um, have power over us. Yes, that had happened. However, that's just the story. That's, that's really the story 
to support what it is that we are here to do is that we are here um, to play with the the marriage between eternal soul and physical bodies to understand and to understand what each of our thoughts, each of our power, what is the, the, the consequences of those power. That's what we're here to understand as eternal soul, because as eternal soul, we don't, we really don't know. We, um, I would say that it's not, we may know, but we don't have the, the, ex the feeling experience a physical experience of the consequences of our thoughts the consequences of our power and we are what we are here to do is really to understand and feel that power what it is to actually experience that so that is why we took on or we agreed to take on limitations. Every one of us, and when we incarnate on earth, we decide to take on certain limitations. And so that is what, uh, so, so I know that when some of you mentioned that, yes, we, it's because we were um, lied to or somehow, there are other beings who, um, through generations, was harnessing our power. Yes, but we agreed to it. It's not, um, it's not a victim and aggressor scenarios. We look at it as a victim and victimizer um, scenarios. But that was from the vantage or from the from the the point of view of being a um, in third dimension. That is what we play with in duality. That is what we play with. We we play with black or white, good or bad. That's what we play with. And so in the third dimension, in order to give us that play of uh, experiencing being a victim, experiencing being a victimizer. We created these stories that, oh, that, uh, you know, there are certain powers that were that came up with all these schemes in order to program us, in order to disempower us. Yes, that happened. That is, that was the story. Something else is also true as well. We as a um, creative being, we know what we are here, what is going to happen when we come here and we agree to it. So if you really um, understand what that is, if you really know that it's not because we are victim, we actually agree to it so that we can have certain experience, so that we can understand what that feels like. We can experience at a physical level what being a victim feels like. And we also have lifetimes where we are actually the victimizer. So we have actually all have been um, good people and bad people. We've all been killed or we, and we've actually all have killed other people as well different lifetimes we have all these experience why so that we can actually understand all of that what it's all about so that's my my talk about now that we are Getting into the next um, dimension, we are moving on to a very different kind of play. We're moving out of 
um, duality. We're moving out of playing victim, victimizer. It's no longer that, that we are coming to the fifth dimension. So in the fifth dimension, our understanding of power has to be upgraded to something that is more in line with this. And first thing I mentioned is that we actually have all the power to shift any experience that we wanted to sh shift. Um, we may not be able to do it in five seconds, but given time, no matter what it is that we, um, no matter how much is against us, if we put our mind to it, we can actually overcome all of that. So now we come to talking about what power means. And now I want to actually start to talk about the, the dichotomy the, or the relationship between love and power. So how come it takes generations to shift us from being uh, at one point in 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 our um, being at one point in the history of human beings we actually are more powerful we actually have more capability than now and as a, a human collective we wanted to experience being a lot less powerful so that we actually can have that experience and we agree to it at a collective level. So how do we accomplish that? And that is through generations. So, so that's why I want to talk about what love and power, what, what is the, the, the relationship between them? Because What we, what do we have that is, that gives us power? What we focus on gives us power. So, for example, um, let me find an example. Power. So, for example, I, um, I like to do meditations. For example, I like to do meditations. Rather real life um, example is yes. So at first, when I do meditations, I was able to. Let's say it. It took me. It took me a good half an hour before I can actually get into a state that is more in centered. So it took. It took. It used to take me. 30 minutes just to quiet my mind down so that I can get to starting meditation. And now it actually does not take me long now, like 30 seconds, I can do it. Sometimes even less, depending on how um, determined I am. So, and at first when I do meditations with all of you, so I've done, I've been doing um, like weekly meditations with, with all of with um, some of you, let's say all of you. So at first, I can only get, let's, for example, like this much, only this much um, results from, I can only um, manage to guide all of you to feel the effects of the meditation just this much. And after a year, I was able to do a do more, a better job at it. And I think um, after a couple of years, um, some of the feedback for some of you is that you feel like that I was able to guide some of you into really deep meditations. And you, and it's I would, was able to shift your state of mind in such a way that it's. Um, that it, it shifted and it takes you a while to actually um, come back into being conscious. So, so yes, 
I like to do meditations. So because I love something, so I focus and I put my energy into it. And when whatever it is that I put my focus, it's like where I put my energy in, I'm able to get better and better and better to the point where I don't just shift myself. I actually can shift my environment, environment, including some of you as well. I was able to shift some of you. So whatever it is that I love to do, I was able to have more power over and meaning that I was able to affect, be more um, effective effective as doing that as well so that is what i want to bring out about love and focus and love and power when you love something you put your focus in it and that's where you can start to become more powerful and also the people that you love you spend the most time with and that's why you can potentially have the most influence over and be able to have power to affect their life for better or for worse and vice versa the people that you love most is going to have the most ability to affect you as well <clears throat> so that is the, the the connection between love and power. And, and also the way we create, it is through love. That's why sexual organs are there. It is through love that we can create so many things that we want. Physically create another human being that is really literally a labor of love. So that is um, the, the love and power. So I've been babbling for a while. I just want to get some feedback, comments, questions so far. Any questions about being power or... or no questions, but... Um... It, it's really true. I started to feel your meditation more and more. It's more and more powerful. It's true. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's because I put my attention and intention doing it. And I, I put the work in. So that's when whatever it is that you focus, you have more power. I, I'm just wondering, is it possible to put your intention, not in the sense of love, but I, I am directing my intention because I'm angry at something? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> but I'm not going to be creative then. I'm going to be destructive. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> Whatever it is that you put your attention, you focus on, whether positively or negatively, you will get, some, you will get, some, you will create a situation. So yeah. it really depends on your intention as well. That is why um, <clears throat> our power has been siphoned off so so very I would say very tactfully by the powers to be who wants to or, or the, the, the powers that was who wants to have power over us because they know how powerful everybody each person can be so that's why they want to make sure that um, and <clears throat> we don't use power for our own good, that we handed our power over so that other people can use our power against us. 
and they were really good at it. They have perfected their <clears throat> the perfected their scheme over um, many years, but but now the gig is up. <laughs> Especially when we're divided against each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's one of the, the the tricks of the trade. Divide and conquer. <laughs> that's why in the fifth dimension, oneness comes back in. Because when we truly embrace oneness, we cannot be divided anymore. We are much more powerful as one rather than when when we are pitched against one another so, so that, I would, that, that might be a topic for another time one <laughs> <laughs> that's complicated it's, um <clears throat> i i would um touch a little bit about it because um power yeah um yes the um yeah i would touch a little bit about it is that yes oneness is really the next the next level of the game and mm -hmm. also every sunday <laughs> the the one heart meditation is is really uh, about oneness that's the, the underlying underlying um in my intention my underlying intention is to promote oneness is to really allow each and everyone who participate to be able to feel the oneness and also to i would say send that oneness message out into the collective because everything that each one of us do we affect the collective as well mm. So yes, working on it. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Yes, yes, yes. So any other comments or questions before I continue? Okay, great. So let me just get back to where I am. So I talked a little bit about the dichotomy of love and power and what that is all about <clears throat> okay great so now i want to lead into to really so before i talk about how to claim reclaim our own power because as a as a divine being we took on limitations, willingly took on limitations to come here to play a kind of a, um, a game that we all came here to play a game. And um, a lot of the previous programming is really about How should I say it? It's about um, giving our, or I should, I should say that it is really about um, not only our own power. And also there's been a lot of um, bad mouthing, I, I guess is the best word I can think of or uh, a lot of negative connotation about self-love. Because if you love yourself too much, you would be criticized as being selfish. If you do things for yourself, you it's very likely that you may be um, criticized as being selfish. Whereas, um, so there doing things for ourselves, wanting things for ourselves, actually has been weaponized against us. And, and we, that's why uh, 
there's so much emphasis on doing things for the family, for the people. Or, so you don't, uh, so yeah, put on a mask so that you can uh, protect someone else in your family. Don't do it, not, not doing it for yourself, but doing it for someone else. So all of these programs, <laughs> so yes, programs, programs, programs. It is really the self has been so denigrated. Doing things and, and thinking for ourselves has been so discouraged. And so that's why um, before I talk about reclaiming our power, actually the first thing I want to talk about is, is that each one of us, every one of us, every soul, has its own unique soul signature that um so unique that no two are alike it's just like our thumbprints our fingerprints no two are alike and that soul signature is what it is that we actually need to get back to and need to uncover and discover and when we fully embrace who we are um, without being apologetic without compromising ourselves I'm not saying that we you know we're gonna elbow out everyone else because it's about me self-love it's not about that it's actually about being a um, being good to other people, yes, but not at the expense of ourselves. Being kind also include being kind to ourselves as well. So that's why unique soul signature is something I want to focus on because each of us has that. And we actually have been so dehumanized or um, that we we actually wanted this a lot of our education a lot of our socializing is about trying to fit in trying to not stand out because if you stand out and then um, it's not so safe so it's about safety thing and it's when we go to the, the when we play in the Knicks uh, or in the this new dimension, the first thing we have to do is actually get back to who we truly are, to do our best to discover who we are first, to help ourselves first before we start to do the other things to help other people. And so <clears throat> um, unique soul signature, what else can I say about it? It is really that part of us that is um, the divine part of us. So creator universal creator is has is so complete and all encompassing it unique the 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 universal creator has everything all and everything all time all space all thoughts all vibrations, all frequencies. However, when the universal creator wants to know itself, the only way to do it is to separate itself out into all of these different um, unique soul frequency so that each unique soul frequency can make their own 
discovery to create whatever it is and that is within their divine nature to create. And when each and every one of us, unique soul signature, do our part, which is to discover that uniqueness within ourselves and to create authentically from that uniqueness. And when we come back together again as all unique soul signatures, creating, exploring, and when we come all the way back, and that's when we can bring all of those um, different experiences back into oneness to become whole again. That is a big undertaking. And each and every unique soul signature has to do its own work authentically to really go forth into the universe and create according to what's within us. And if one of us decided that, oh, you know, I'm not worth it. I can't do this. It's too hard. And even if one of us unique soul signature do that, oneness will be missing something. It will not be complete. That is why it's so important for each and every one of us to reclaim our unique soul signature. And it is for that reason that I want to um, take everybody into a meditation. It is a meditation to embody and embrace your unique soul signature. So any comments before I do that? No? Okay. 